Live from the Student Union on campus, this is Goldmine Live. Your weekly all-access pass inside Charlotte Athletics is brought to you by Ortho Carolina. Proud to present the 2018 Charlotte 49ers football season. Bojangles, it's bow time. Harris Teeter, where 49ers fans shop for groceries. University Eye Associates, excellence is eye care. And by Wells Fargo. Charlotte 49er fans, show your pride with a customized Wells Fargo debit card. Stop by your nearest Wells Fargo or visit Wells Fargo Car Design Studio online to learn more. Now, here's your host, the voice of the 49ers, Matt Swearat. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Goldmine Live this week here at the Student Union on campus, uh, back on campus this week. And uh, a lot more folks around here today. Of course, we had homecoming last week, had the fall break on Monday and Tuesday last week. Uh, but a lot of activity today coming up the big win against Western Kentucky WKU was the homecoming opponent this past Saturday and the uh, 49ers had a huge win 40 to 14 over WKU. We're joined as always by head coach Brad Lambert Al Wallace today as well and coach congratulations fantastic game on Saturday. Uh, great to be sitting here on this Monday three and three two and one in conference USA with a big homecoming homecoming win. Yeah it's nice uh, guys really uh, focused uh, thought the staff the players. Uh, you know the fans everybody everybody was really into it and thought our guys really focused well and prepared well and uh, went out and executed at a high level and didn't make a lot of mistakes uh, from a penalty standpoint uh, played well on third down uh, things like that so it was a it was a pretty clean game you know going into the game one of the things you talked about was getting better on third down offensively and then on defense getting off the field on third down and really from from the opening kick that was that was an emphasis that you guys really took care of business with all day long yeah I thought the guys really in those critical moments uh, executed uh, extremely well and and that's what it takes to win uh, you have to be able to run the ball you got to be able to stop the run and then you know make plays on third down when you have an opportunity not commit a lot of penalties uh, play mistake free football and and then when you create some turnovers and create some short fields for your offense uh, you know those good things can happen for you. Juwan Foggy had a great game and talking about creating turnovers that very first possession you guys go out there on, on defense and he gets the interception returns it back to the 35 yard line of the Hilltoppers that sets up Benny LeMay's touchdown but talk about the defense coming out high level and then Juwan Foggy make the interception. Yeah he's just playing at a high level for us right now all year long he's been producing uh, making a lot of impact plays and uh, you know but that's the way he prepares you know um, you look back over time and and the great players always prepare that way and I think Juwan's really set himself up in the way he prepares you know on Tuesday and Wednesday he's making those plays in practice so then you go out and make them on Saturday so I've just been really proud of him and a lot of guys are doing that they're, they're practicing hard and and making plays in practice and so that gives you an opportunity on Saturday to, to make those plays and envision that we talk about guys visualizing those plays making them during the game and and staying in the moment one play at a time and I think he's done a really good job of that coach how much uh, of an impact did the bye week play into the game planning very clean football game and great execution on both sides well, I think it was big you know we a little bit different this year than years past we just said hey we're going to go ahead and work on West Kentucky because they had so many motion shifts they did so many different things offensively so uh, we wanted to try to get ahead and I think it, it helped the guys Run defense has been so good and, and again he took the run away from the Hilltoppers they had some success throwing the football but didn't get those big plays like we've seen the, in the past. Yeah I think that's real critical for us. Uh, you know they're they're a team that we felt like we had to you know really take the run away from them uh, and, and try to limit big plays they're pretty skilled on the perimeter and you know felt like we you know other than the one drive the scoring drive the. Uh, you know we had a chance right there I thought Denzel was going to make the pick twice during that drive and we're just a little bit off uh, from making the play the guy that really the guy took the ball from him on the one play uh, I thought he I thought he had it and I thought we we're going to give it to the offense again uh, down there in the in the plus side of the 50 uh, but hey you know the guys just kept plugging and that's what that's what we uh, talked to him about for two weeks and is just hey just play the next play and let's let's try to find a way to get off the field a lot of great individual games on Saturday but it was a team effort in that there were some guys that got dinged up and still came back and played a little bit but the guys on the second string and third string also stepped up and did their job. Yeah you know we lost Alex Highsmith in there for a while and he's been so productive for us so we had to have some guys you know come in and 
and play and make plays. Uh, you know, and then of course we lost Chris. Uh, you know, there, uh, and so you know Evan had to come in and play well, and I thought he had a good two weeks of practice uh, as he prepared himself. So. Uh, you know, we had some guys step up, and that's what it takes. And you talk to guys all the time about, you know, I tell Carrington King's story all the time. When we went to Western Kentucky last year, you know, he didn't think that was his last game. And lo and behold, it was. So you, you just have to you have to play every game like it could be my last one and play, play him one play at a time and play hard and, and be ready to go because you don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a game that can be taken away from you pretty quick. So I thought some guys stepped up and played well when they, when they were called on. We still talk about you know being a young program, year six, but you have that uh, you, you're developing the depth now. So when someone does go down, and even when you know when Benny Light and Lemay had a great day, but he got a little dinged up and had to come out of the game, and you ran Calvin Camp out there for a big third down, and, and, and he got the job done. Yeah, and I think the the big thing in this game when you go back and watch it, I think our offensive line just played really extremely well up front. Uh, they really controlled the line of scrimmage, which was what I felt like we needed going into the game and. Uh, that allowed us some, to do some things. I thought our offensive line played extremely well up front. We played Nate Davis at tackle for the first time. He really did a nice job, responded well, put Chris inside uh, at guard, kind of flipped those two, and I think it worked out well. But uh, the guys up front, it all started with them. They really did a nice job of, of controlling the line of scrimmage. Do they need that commitment to the running game to really get going? We've seen this offense really get rolling in the second half, especially Benny LeMay, who's just – just power running in the second half of football games. Yeah, and I think, uh, Al, that's kind of who we are. You know, we our guys know we want to be committed to that, and we want to be a physical group up front. And, and uh, you know, th they've really taken that on and, and done a nice job with that. They're a physical group. Uh, they enjoy running the ball. They enjoy getting after people. So uh, it's been nice to have Nate back and give you that big guy in there that can move some people. So. I think our two tackles played extremely well. The interior piece, so we lost Jalen in there for a play, kind of got the breath knocked out of him. But, uh, you know, the guys o overall up front really responded well and gave gave our, our guys an opportunity to make plays. And we don't see a lot of credit for those tight ends, but we watch them and we see yeah. them do such a great job in the run game. Yeah, they're a real critical piece. We've kind of emphasized that this year. It's kind of where we've moved to, playing a little more two tight ends. Uh, there's pretty much a tight end in the game most of the time. We do do some four wides, but uh, we want to have our tight ends in the game. They're both seniors. Uh, they both have been around. So, you know, hey, let's let's try to get them in the game, see what they can do. And they're both athletic guys. So they're they're doing a good job in the run game, but they're really good when they can get out in space. Back to Benny LeMay, 17 carries, 121 yards. That's an average of 7.1. And watching him now it reminds me a lot of Khalif Phillips in that it's going to take more than one guy to get him down. We saw on Saturday where he bounced up a couple of tackles and ran over a couple of guys. Yeah, he did. He's doing a good job of keeping himself alive and running through some plays uh, and then getting to the second level and and continue to push. Uh, I've been proud of him. He's got he's really worked hard this year, uh, you know, since January to put himself in this position. So hopefully we can keep him healthy and and keep 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 him running. It was nice to see those other guys, Amac, uh, you know, Calvin, uh, Ishad. We got Ishad in the game for the first time. I think he's going to be a really good running back as well. Calvin really made some nice physical runs, which for him, he's not as big a guy. Uh, it was important for, you know, he kind of has a little more patience and then really, you know, stuck some runs in certain situations. I was really proud of him as well. You know, when, when you look at a running back, you see the numbers and you know touchdowns and things like that. But we were really impressed with the blocking that Benny had on Saturday too. A couple of great blocks protecting the blind side of the quarterback. He does a really good job as a physical guy, and you know those are the things that just kind of they don't show up anywhere. Um, and he's he's he played a lot of reps. You know you, you think how many times he carried the ball, but he played a lot of reps in the game, and and protection's a big piece of that. And there's a couple of times he was on the right side. He slid over and protected on the left side and saw some things coming. And we'll have to really be on point this week because Middle Tennessee, they really like to blitz you. They really like to get after you. So we're going to have to be on point. You know, we're going to have to be really good from a protection standpoint this week. Well, you came out strong like you had hoped to. You worked those two weeks uh, since that last game to get 
prepare for this game, and it was a great way to start. Now you're going to go back on the road against Middle. Um, you took some experience from the two previous road games, and the guys saw what happens when you don't come out right yeah. away, but also see what happens when you do. So we'll see what happens this week going into this next road game. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, they started yesterday. Uh, today's their day off, so hopefully get back out there tomorrow and, and really just go to work on tomorrow and preparing hard for this football team. they got a great quarterback, a guy that I think is probably the best player in our league, and and uh, you've got to be where you're supposed to be or he's going to take advantage of you. We saw it last year uh, in our game here. He made some great throws, and and so we're going to have to be on point uh, and have to have a great week of preparation. And they'll be hungry coming off the loss against FIU when Brent Stockstill did get hurt, but we got to figure that he'll be ready to go in our game this week at uh, Middle Tennessee. We'll take a time out of the Coaches Show back with more with Coach Lambert in a moment. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the one and only Ford Truck Month, the place to find one-of-a-kind deals on Ford F-Series and the brand with the most J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards. With best-in-class towing and torque, these bad boys make the rules and break them. That's why it's America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. But like ribs at a barbecue, these deals won't last long. Ford Truck Month, it's buy now time, partner. During Ford Truck Month, get a 2018 F-150 with 0 for 72 or 11790 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Uh, welcome back to Goldmine Live, everybody, here at uh, the Student Union on campus. This week, the Niners back on the road going to Middle Tennessee. Game time is uh, 3 o'clock with a kickoff, and our pregame coverage will start at 2 o'clock with the Bojangles tailgate show. Well, Coach, uh, again, good win against Western Kentucky, uh, putting up 40 points. That's the most you put up against a Conference USA opponent. Uh, you know, when you go back and look at the tape, I know you're really happy after the game. What did you see when you looked at it yesterday? We talked about almost being a perfect game for about three quarters until you know, when Western gets that far behind in the fourth quarter. It's tough to keep your foot on the gas pedal the entire time. Uh, the mistakes that happened late, I thought that was probably a lot of the reason why. Yeah, late, uh, you know, we really wanted to look at some other guys. So, you know, you're playing um, a lot of your second team guys because you want them to get game experience. And, you know, to get, we took the sub, we had a substitution penalty on defense on the one drive that they scored on late. Because I was trying to get all the guys out, you know, I didn't want to get Tim Horn hurt and Jeff Gimmel hurt, and you know, in a situation like that, I felt like, hey, we need to get these young guys in, let them play, uh, see what they can do, and and actually they they, they did some good things, you know, that uh, they were going fast and you know all, all that, they were in clock mode, so um, we just got to find a way to get off the field there. But I thought our young guys got in, got some valuable experience. Uh, but, you know, after you watch the video, you know, there's always things you can improve on, um, you know, making plays. Uh, like I said, the one drive they scored their first touchdown, uh, we had a chance to get off the field there a couple times, uh, you know, making some catches. Uh, Rico had a big drop on third down down there. Uh, drop passes can really kill drives. I mean, they're just, you know, it's, it, whether it's a first down drop or second down drop, third, you know, it just it puts you behind the chains uh, and you have a chance to advance the chains. and. One of the things we've made a big deal out of is keeping drives alive and, and keeping our offense on the field and our defense off. You know, defense done a pretty good job getting themselves off the field, and the offense has done a good job keeping them over there. And, and so we've got to continue that trend, uh, and that all starts with uh, Ben and the offensive line to be able to run the ball. Coach, we saw Victor Tucker uh, have nine receptions in this football game. You know he's dealing with the shoulder. How is his health coming along? He's doing well. I was really pleased with him. He's actually battling a little ankle injury as well. So he's pretty beat up right now, but he's a tough guy. Uh, that's the thing that's really standing out to me. He's he's come out there and, and played well, a little beat up a little bit. Uh, he just continued uh, the track he's been on. We even tried to hit him deep a couple times, but he's done a really good job uh, you know, catching the ball and blocking on the run game. So I've been really pleased with Vic and his toughness and what he's shown us. You know, quarterback has to have a lot of confidence that if they put the ball anywhere near him, he's going to catch it. <laughs> yeah, he's done a nice job with his eyes and his hands and, you know, catching the football. And as, as all of our guys have, uh, you know, I, th I think they we haven't had a ton of drop passes, and that's been a real point of emphasis for us because of, the ability to keep the chains moving when you catch the ball. Um, you know, and that's just the clock keeps running, the chains keep moving, all those things that keep the rhythm of the game going offensively. Uh, if you don't drop passes, uh, those are huge. And then 
you throw the run game in there and and you really got a chance to, to get a good rhythm going. I think that's really what happened to us on Saturday. Our guys have gotten a real nice rhythm offensively starting from the first play. So many young guys, especially in the receiving game, and it's nice to see, you know, also the short memory in that. Like you mentioned, the drop by Rico in, in the first half, but then to come back and make plays, still run a good route, draws a couple of penalties, then in the, you know, in the fourth quarter gets the touchdown. Yeah, I think that's the, the big emphasis we've made with our football team is, hey, the most important play in football is the next play. And so you can't, looking back will keep you from, you know, making a play on the, on the present play. So we've, we've tried to make a big deal with, with our team about that. And, you know, whether it's game to game, drive to drive, play to play, you want to you keep moving forward and, and focus on what you got to do at, at this moment right now on this play. Coach, we saw earlier in the season the running back position and Benny LeMay involved a lot in the passing game. I think going into the second half, we kind of mentioned it, and then boom, there you go, a couple screen screen passes, and Benny is back involved in the passing game. Yeah, we'd like to, and, you know, really we missed one early in the game. We threw the post deep, and we had Ben on a corner route and his wide open, and we just missed it. You know, he took the shot to, to Vic deep, uh, which – I didn't think it was a bad shot. If he'd have thrown it a little more open, he probably could have gotten to it. But, but Benny was wide open on it. Uh, we want to continue to utilize those guys in the throwing game because they're really good with the ball in their hand in space. So, uh, and Benny's a really good catcher of the football. He he does a nice job with his eyes as well. And so, uh, we need to keep using him. Then his ability to break tackles in open space, too, opens up those big plays. How about the play of Chris Reynolds before he got hurt? He was really having a good football game. He was. I really I really liked I thought he had a good two weeks, uh, you know, coming into this game. I thought his mechanics, his fundamentals, his feet, his net, you know, climbing the pocket with his feet up under him. I thought he was playing extremely well. And, and I thought Evan played, you know, the same way when he came in. Uh, that first play, we threw a screen to him. He kind of pumped the guy. He was supposed to go ahead and throw it, but he, he ended up getting away with it, uh, and we weren't downfield. That's that's a thing that can happen on the screen if you hesitate or pause, and then people get down the field. Then your your receiver gets past the line of scrimmage. Then, you're in a, then you have an issue. But it was right at the line, and, and it ended up working out good. So both of them, I thought mechanically, I thought fundamentally did a nice job with their feet, and that's really throwing the ball all starts with your feet. Two different body types, but you talk to the receivers and, and then Benny coming out of the backfield. They're really confident in both these guys, and, and they're comfortable with both these guys. Yeah, they they really have, and that's a tribute to Evan coming in, you know, in May and really just, you know, putting himself in our football team and, and really gravitating to the guys and, and becoming a part of our team. He's done a good job of that, and so, um, he, you know, the guys all know he can, he can do a good job when he comes in, so I don't think, I don't think we missed anything when he came in the game. Also, you know, the big guy, 6'5", you know, that touchdown, he took it himself right over center and got you six. Yeah, you know, we just, hey, get right back on the ball, run quarterback sneak. You got to figure you can, you know, get it in there. Big guy, uh, that was a good call by coach, you know, just to punch it in uh, when you had the opportunity. One of my favorite plays, though, on the game was when we had Evan in the game at quarterback and we put eye shot in at running back. We had our one of our tallest players at quarterback <laughs> and our shortest player at running back. That looked odd. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, I think Matt Preston, our studio host, was talking about there was a, an old poster years ago, and we're going back a long time, when Manute Bowl played uh -huh. in uh, the NBA. Well, there was a picture when they were in the USBL, and uh, Manute Bowl and Bugsy Moe spoke, and Bugsy, Bugsy was sitting in the, yeah. below the knees yeah. uh, of Manute, and it, you know, two big guys and a yeah. small guy here. Well, Fisher came and did a great job, didn't he? Yeah, I, you know, you talking about I shot uh, finger. He he really did. I thought he came in and played well. Uh, he had never been in a game, and I wanted to see him in a game because he's he's practiced extremely well since he's gotten here in the summer, and and he's a real physical runner. He can make guys miss. He made he made their starting linebacker miss in the backfield and made yards, and then got the big first down on the last drive where we could knee it out. You know, I thought that was a a really good run by him so we could finish that out, knee the clock out, and, and get the game over with. Only 5'6", he really gives you a different look. It's, he's a lot different. You can't find him back there. It's hard for <laughs> linebackers. <laughs> Jonathan Cruz, a couple more field goals, one from 51 yards. Again, showing your confidence in him going out there and hit that long one. Yeah, he's, you know, he has the ability, and I didn't even think twice about it. Uh, you know, he banged a couple of them off the right side. He hit the right upright. They called timeout, and we came back, uh, ran a play, tried to shoot in the end zone. And then he came back and pushed it right again. Uh, he was a little off, but he ended up hitting the 51-yarder, hit another one. Um, he just was – and then he got – second half really got his kickoffs going. Uh, he's, a, he's, he's a talented guy, and we got a lot of confidence in him. 
take a break. We'll come back talk more about Middle Tennessee. Our next opponent coming up this Saturday. Game time is at 3 o'clock again at Middle and home again the following week against Southern Miss. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the one and only Ford Truck Month, the place to find one-of-a-kind deals on Ford F-Series and the brand with the most J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards. With best-in-class towing and torque, these bad boys make the rules and break them. That's why it's America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. But like ribs at a barbecue, these deals won't last long. Ford Truck Month, it's buy now time, partner. During Ford Truck Month, get a 2018 F-150 with 0 for 72 or 11790 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Right, welcome back to Goldmine Live, everybody, here at the Student Union today. Niners getting ready for week seven. They travel to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, to take on Middle Tennessee. Three o'clock on Saturday. The uh, Blue Raiders, three and three right now, just like the Niners. Also, two and one in Conference USA. As we go into week seven, coach, you're tied with some teams at uh, two and one, second place in the uh, standings. And, and Middle's one of those teams that coming into the season we knew would be near the top of the standings. You mentioned Brent Stock's still their quarterback. Maybe the best quarterback in this league and certainly the best player on offense anyway for Middle Tennessee. Yeah I just have a ton of respect for him. Uh, you know I've kind of gotten around him a little bit outside of football too. What a what a great person. I mean just a he's a really really good man and you know, he leads their team. He's an extremely accurate passer. He's He's fundamentally sound uh, in the pocket, uh, has the ability to run, uh, you know, and from what I understand, he's a really good golfer, too. So, you know, that's always a good thing. <laughs> but he uh, he leads them. I think he's the I think he's the guy in our league. And and you look at Middle Tennessee, their schedule's been so difficult. I mean, they had to play Vandy in Georgia, then they had to play at Marshall. Uh, they played FAU, who won our league last year. I mean, their schedule's been, you know, really, really difficult. So. Uh, we've got to go to their place and and try to, um, you know, get a, you know, run the ball, uh, establish something offensively, get off the field, try to limit big plays, and and uh, you know have an opportunity to win the game on the road. Stock still did get hurt against FIU, didn't finish the game, but you got to figure that he'll be most likely back this week. I think it was an ankle injury, and and he'll probably be back. And and if that's the case, you, you just mentioned you're know, trying to keep your offense on the field, keep him off the field because of his big playability. Yeah, you want the best place for him to be is on the bench, you know. So uh, if we can keep him over there, that'll, that'll that'll help us out. But you know, he came out the second half and was fully dressed and on the sideline and and ready to go. So I don't know, I don't, you know, you don't know the extent of the injury um, un until we get to Saturday. But my my inclination is he probably sprained his ankle and and he just couldn't go on it. Uh, and then they brought in. Uh, their backup quarterback, and he actually played extremely well. They, you know, they had a, they had a chance to tie it. They went for the win. Uh, they threw the ball in the end zone. It got intercepted. Uh, you know, safety for FIU made a really really good play and ended the game. They had a field goal. They had a ch an opportunity. They were in field goal range to send the thing to uh, overtime. And you know, they tried to end the game in regulation, which was the right play. You know, you're on the road and you, you're trying to win this thing. And they they'd done that to FIU the week before. You know, on a two point play and and had or two weeks before whatever it was but uh, they'd won on a two point play and beat them so uh, they stayed aggressive and went after it uh, didn't go their way uh, Saturday night this football team coach Spencer they've been so great on the defensive end is there anything uh, from middle Tennessee that you see on film that's concerning you in the running game yeah their offensive line I think they're they've got a veteran offensive line a lot of old guys they got three seniors in there so they've been a, a part of a lot of wins and and they know what they have at quarterback uh, their running back that will play against us, uh, 21, uh, Thomas, he played against us last year and ran for, I think, 180. I don't know the exact numbers last year. So he's more than capable. Um, he's a big physical back, kind of like the guy at UAB. Uh, so I think that's the thing that bothers me the most is they their offensive line is a veteran offensive line with a veteran quarterback. Uh, and then they have some playmakers out on the, on the outside. Uh, you know, Ty Lee's as good as we'll play against. He's a very active player. Uh, you'll have to keep him under control. So I think that's the biggest thing is just they're real experienced in their offensive line and, and they know what they're doing. Those playmakers you mentioned, Ty Lee being one, Patrick Smith, Brad Anderson, three guys that have over 250 yards catching each. So, you know, Stockstill has multiple guys to go to. It's not like you're honing in on one or two. 
Yeah, he does, and they're they're very good at the skill position. They've been every year we've played them, uh, been really impressed with their skill position. Uh, kind of like Western, I felt really, you know, their their skill position from a secondary uh, wide receiver standpoint. They're very active guys, and that's in our league. Really, it's week in and week out. You know, whether you're like we talked about last week, whether you're playing Old Dominion, Western Kentucky, Middle. You know, we'll play the guy at Marshall. He's as good as anybody has. So every week uh, you're going to you're going to face good players from the skill position, and and you got to try to limit big plays as much as you can. Those explosive plays are the ones that can really get you. We saw that in the app game when we played them. They had the 90-yard touchdown. Those explosive plays are are hard to overcome. So we've got to do a good job of of not letting out the big play and then getting off the field on third down. Against WKU, they utilized the tight ends quite a bit in the passing game, not just blocking, but also they, catching passes. They did, and, and uh, you know, that was kind of coming in. They had, uh, you know, Fortenberry, I think is his name. He was uh, 42. Uh, he's a good player. I mean, he had a lot of catches for him, and they tried to get the ball to him uh, in our game. So uh, we knew that going in. Uh, they were, they like to use their tight ends kind of like we do, and so – uh, we had to make sure we were solid on that. How about for middle? They use it as much? No, they're more. You know, they 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 play with their tight end, uh, but they're they like four wides. Uh, they like to spread you out. Uh, they use the whole field horizontally and vertically, so uh, they do a pretty good job of of getting the ball on the perimeter. They they do a nice job with their RPO stuff. Uh, Brent's so good at making decisions really quick, so um, that's a that's a problem. And he that's the play he hit on us last year. I think was to tie. You know, on the fade to the inside receiver, it was off an RPO, and he just didn't just put the ball on the money. So you've got to be solid on the back end uh, when they're showing you the RPO stuff. Coach, I feel like we've seen uh, improved tackling against Western Kentucky. Kentucky, the secondary guys really uh, were very good at tackling, but better the corners good and contained on some of those short passes. Yeah, I thought we did a better job. I thought you, I think you're right. Uh, we. we made a big emphasis over the off off the off week you know of tackling and being in position to make those tackles we missed a few but uh you know you're always gonna when you're going against good people you're gonna miss some tackles you want to limit that as much as you can and tackling is so big uh, we tell our team all the time big plays are usually a result of a missed tackle uh, like the app game we talk about we miss a tackle there goes a 90 yard run generally there's a missed tackle in there somewhere and so You've got to be good tacklers and be good blockers on the offensive side of the ball, and that's a big emphasis for us. And I thought the guys did a pretty good job Saturday. How about the play of Jeff Gemmel on Saturday? Yeah, Jeff's been really consistent for us this year, making a lot of good plays for us. Uh, he's a guy that's, you know, but but once again, he's he prepares extremely hard. You know, you look at Alex, Tyree, Kim, all, all those guys. We, we've got a good group of guys that, that come to work every day and, and get themselves ready to play. And, and Jeff's kind of a lead guy from that standpoint. He does a, a really good job of getting the guys together to watch extra film, and and uh, he's done a he's done a good job preparing himself. And and when you prepare well, you have a chance to, you know, play well. I thought Luke Martin came in when when Anthony got hurt. Uh, you know, Luke Martin came in and played his best game he's had since he's been here. I mean, he he really had a good two weeks of practice, and he went out and played well for us in the second half, which we needed uh, because, you know, we hadn't. We hadn't played him a lot. He hadn't been in the game a lot. Uh, Anthony's played pretty much the whole year. Uh, Jeff's played pretty much the whole year at inside backer and, and then Foggy at outside. So, uh, you know, it was good to see Luke come in there and make plays. And he played really fast. I was really impressed with how physical he played, how fast he played. And so I thought he was a real uplift for us uh, defensively when Anthony went down. As you got through week six and, and got the win against the Hilltoppers, how do you feel your secondary has, has played now? Is it getting to where you – are happy with the play? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, those guys, uh, Nafis has come in. He's kind of won that job uh, and is playing pretty well for us. Uh, Denzel's got to continue to stay on point. He's the guy that I thought could have made a couple more plays, but but uh, we made a change at safety. Uh, Quay Gibbs started this game instead of Eddie Rowe. Uh, I thought Ben DeLuca is really, really on an uptick right now, played extremely well against Western. Uh, so those guys got to continue to find their continuity and, and keep playing well and not give up big plays. To look at one of those guys always flying around, had a couple of really big hits again, one along the sideline there. Yeah, he did. I thought he made some good reads and put himself in position to, to make some good plays, uh, you know, tackle in the open field and, and be real physical when he got to the when he got to the ball carrier. 
Let's take a timeout, Coach. We'll give you a break. I think Mark Quattlebaum is going to be our guest. Mark is uh, here to talk a little Niner football. The uh, senior from Cartersville, Georgia. We're back in a moment. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the one and only Ford Truck Month, the place to find one-of-a-kind deals on Ford F-Series and the brand with the most J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards. With best-in-class towing and torque, these bad boys make the rules and break them. That's why it's America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. But like ribs at a barbecue, these deals won't last long. Ford Truck Month, it's buy now time, partner. During Ford Truck Month, get a 2018 F-150 with 0 for 72 or 11790 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. And welcome back to Goldman Live as we continue on getting ready for week seven. The Niners take on the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee this week on the road. Game time is three o'clock. Our pregame coverage starts at two on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. Special guest now, wide receiver, senior wide receiver Mark Quandlebaum. And Mark, thanks for joining us on your day off today. Sir, no problem. How, uh, how's things going for you so far coming up that big win against Western? Uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, everything's good. You know, we're just trying to get back in and get it. Uh, into the building, get some work in, watch some film. You had the extra week with the bye week to prepare, and uh, what was it like? Because you guys came out, you, you just on both sides of the ball, playing fantastic football to start the game. What was that prep preparation like getting into that game because you guys are ready to go? Um, it was just a big emphasis knowing that we had two weeks to prepare. So we wanted to prepare and uh, make sure that we just executed what we've been doing all week. And uh, it worked out to the perfection that we wanted it to, so got good results out of that. You're getting to do a little bit of everything. You're know, returning punts, of course, and playing the slot, playing right wide receiver. What's uh, this senior season been like for you? Um, you know, just trying to get used to a new offense. And uh, Coach Lambert, you know, letting me do a little bit more in the return game. So I'm just trying to let him trust me with the returns and uh, do what I can for the team. What's it been like on a Coach Montgomery being the new offensive coordinator and uh, this new offense? Um, it's more like a pro style. So, you know, we get a little bit of everything uh, under center, shotgun, stuff like that. So we're real versatile, and uh, I don't really have to play like a whole lot. So that's good, too. <laughs> Mark, tell me about that wide receiver room, uh, the connection you all have, and tell me about your role uh, in the slot there. Um, so, you know, we only have two seniors in the room with uh, – the rest freshmen, so it's big that me and Warpe kind of lead those younger guys, letting them know how the uh, game's going to go, you know, the speed of the game, the toughness of the game. So, like, we're just trying to be there for them. And um, my slot role is just basically, you know, quick slot, fast guy. So I'm just trying to uh, open it up for the quarterback, uh, get some coverages moving out there. Yeah, and we talked about, you talked about your leadership there uh, in that room. Another game coming up here on the road. Uh, we know the track record on the road hasn't been what you want it to be. Uh, how do you continue to get those young guys prepared? Um, you know, each and every day you just got to go in and work as if it's the last day that you got to work. You know, uh, we got to make sure that they know that every day is a work day and you can't take no days off in college football because if you do, then the next team's just going to be perfect in the game and you're going to make one mistake. And that's ultimately the wins and losses that, that come down to the mistakes. So we just got to make sure that we don't make any mistakes in the games. Mark, being a senior, being one of the leaders, what what are your impressions of these young wide receivers? There's a lot of talent in this young group, isn't there? Uh, yes, sir. It's actually the most talent that I've seen since I've been here. Um, you know, Rico Arnold, Victor Tucker, two guys who've come in and been explosive for us. Uh, you know, you still got guys like Cam Benton, uh, Cam Dollar, who are uh, still young and ready to play. So you got a young group, but very talented. Now, you're from Cartersville, Georgia, and there's this connection now between Cartersville and and the Charlotte Ford Niners. The fourth is now Jonathan Cruz, our kicker. But uh, talk about being from Cartersville, football there, and, and becoming a Niner. Um, you know, football there, the tradition is strong. And so uh, once the uh, coach Lambert had came down to recruit me, Brooks, and TL, it was kind of like, you know, we all wanted to play college football together. It was the only opportunity that we had. So we all just kind of came here. And then Jonathan uh, was a great kicker in high school. And the missing piece for Charlotte has kind of been a kicker so it was just kind of I don't know if it was just the right moment at the right time but we just seemed to be able to pull him out he was I think he was the best kicker in his class actually so that was actually a blessing to get him so I mean I don't know what it is about Cartersville but I mean I think you know it's just Cartersville football of course friends are Brooks Barton who now wants to be a coach he stays here and he's on your your staff as a player coach what's that like um you know, like, Brooks has always kind of been, like, 
a coach, kind of, even when he was a player. He kind of, like, knows the game. He's been around it a long time with his dad being our head coach in high school. And he just knows, like, the ins and out of the game. So, like, you can always go to him and ask him, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he's always just, you know, helpful in giving you advice and letting you know what you need to do. I know you're told when, when you come out of high school, hey, enjoy it. It goes fast. But now here you are sitting halfway through your senior season. How fast has it gone by? Um, it actually went by super fast. You actually miss kind of the days that you get with your friends. And then you look up and all your friends are gone. And it's kind of just you. And so now you just got to be like, all right, well, how do I want my senior season to be? And you know, the work that you put in is just got to be more. Uh, the effort that you give has got to be more. And the passion that you give has got to be more so. You know, it goes by fast, so everybody out there listening, just make sure that you give everything you got every single day. Yeah, how do you plan and what are you preparing for uh, after football here? Um, you know, I'm just kind of trying to get my degree and then let everything happen. I'm not trying to really think about too much at, uh, so fast. Kind of just trying to, you know, play my last season, get the best out of it, and then after that, just trying to worry about what comes. Um, but I feel like I'm in pretty good hands knowing that once I graduate, there's a lot of connections that I can uh, use when I get out of college. So to Mark Quattlebaum, a senior wide receiver. Mark, you know, you look at the rest of the season, it's only half over. And uh, coming into the year, everybody we've had on the show on Monday talking about the goals you had at the start of the season, and they're all still intact. You're halfway through it. You're 2-1 and one in the league, tied for second place. Um, you know, talk about the next six games. You know, you take it one at a time, but what's still in front of you? You guys still have a chance to really meet all these goals. Um, we just got to look at each opponent like, you know, they're the best team that we're going to play in the season. You know, we can't look at an opponent and be like, oh, they're not that good, so we're not going to prepare as hard. You know, we have to look at every opponent like they're Alabama. So uh, for the next six games, we just got to treat every game like it's the conference championship game, you know, with preparation, execution, making sure that we keep middle mistakes to a, a minimum and uh, just playing as hard as we can. Tough game, of course, at middle. You've seen them a couple of times now. What is your take on going up against the Blue Raiders? Um, we just got to be tough. Like, when it comes to Middle Tennessee, they're just a grimy team that's just going to try to, you know, get in your head and uh, get you off balance. But we just got to be tough and, you know, stay focused and stay on track, do what we do, and uh, hope for the best to come out. I know Coach uh, wants to get you guys involved in everything, not just playing football, but being you know, great students on campus and getting out in the community as well. And you had a chance last year with the Miracle League All-Stars coming here uh, on campus playing at the baseball field to participate in that. What was that experience like? Um, you know, we actually got to do something like that in high school. So it was a good opportunity just to, you know, let the kids know that ev everything's happened for a reason. But, you know, you just got to make the best out of your situation. And to go out there and see those kids smile, even though they have, you know, disabilities is just like, you know, you're lucky to be in a position that you're in if you don't have a disability. So like for us to just go out and give two hours is nothing for them to go through that situation every single day. So, uh, you know, just to see them smile is just, you know, I'll go out there two hours every day if I had to. But that smile is just something that just you can't replace that smile. I'm sure you guys are pretty tight as a group with the wide receivers. So, but what, you know, when you're when you're out of the football uh, offices and you're back on campus, you have a lot of free time. Which, what do you like to do? Um, me personally, uh, I either watch film, uh, watch football on TV, or just kind of do homework. That's about it. But got a favorite player you kind of like watching? Um, like in the NFL? Yeah. A uh, favorite player in the NFL would be Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I like the Green Bay Packers, and I feel like Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback. So can't go wrong with watching the best quarterback can't in the league. Can't go wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess for you, the ultimate this year, outside of you know winning six, seven, eight games and getting to a bowl game is to return a punt for a touchdown, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, this uh, week? Uh, this week, uh, we'll <laughs> see. We'll see what Coach West draws up on the punt scheme. Hey, Mark, thanks so much. Uh, yes, enjoy sir. your day off today, and uh, good luck this week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mark quanobaum has been our guest uh, here on Goldman Live, senior wide receiver from Cartersville, Georgia. Back with more with Coach Lambert in a moment. Niners getting set to take on Middle Tennessee this week on the road. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the one and only Ford Truck Month, the place to find one-of-a-kind deals on Ford F-Series and the brand with the most J.D. Power Initial Quality Awards. With best-in-class towing and torque, these bad boys make the rules and break them. That's why it's America's best-selling truck 41 years straight. But like ribs at a barbecue, these deals won't last long. Ford Truck Month, it's buy now time, partner. During Ford Truck Month, get a 2018 F-150 with 0 for 72 or 11790 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. 
And welcome back to Gold Mine Live. We're joined again by head coach Brad Lambert, getting ready for week seven. Niners take on Middle Tennessee this week. Both teams are three and three and tied on the standings at Conference USA at two and one. I want to thank uh, Mark Quanelbaum for coming out and joining us today. And another one, your seniors coach, and great senior class you've got here this season. And another one from Cartersville, Georgia. Yeah, Cartersville has been good to us. Uh, they have a, a really good program over there, and, and uh, you know, good, good, good people come out of there. So it's just been good. Uh, you know, Coach Cruz, the latest, but uh, T.L. and Brooks and, and uh, you know, Mark. Uh, Mark's worked extremely hard, has had a good off season, and, and set himself up to, you know, have a good senior year. And so uh, those guys have all done a really good job of leading us from a work ethic standpoint. Uh, they show up every day and work extremely hard, and, and they're not afraid to get out in the community and do things. And so uh, that's been a huge uh, asset for us. Well, before we uh, do wrap up the show, we've got another segment to go, but uh, want to get to the Bow Jangles Bow Time Challenge this week against Middle Tennessee. What the biggest challenge is, is going to be, and, and is that do you think maybe containing Brent Stockstill, or is there something else? Yeah, that's a that's the probably the biggest challenge is, you know. But I don't know if you can really keep him from making. He's going to get his, so to speak, and I think he'll make make plays. He always does. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for us is going to be our offense handling their defense because they're so different. I mean, they're they'll come at you from all different directions and uh, kind of like UMass. So we're we're going to have to play well up front. Our running backs, our tight ends, our offensive line, uh, and then our quarterback's going to have to see some things, get us in the right protections because they. If they get you in a throwing situation, they're gonna they'll come from everywhere. They like water bugs, man. They just come from everywhere, and and so uh, we're gonna have to really be point. I think that's probably the biggest challenge uh, of all is just trying to settle that thing down and make sure we're all comfortable in in protecting the passer. Coach, such a clean football game. How do you continue uh, to work with this football team throughout the course of the week and making sure that the execution stays at a high level? Well, I think I think once you watch the video yesterday and the guys see it firsthand, uh, you know, you preach it a lot, but there's nothing like going out and doing it and having success doing it, and then that has a chance to breed it uh, from there on. So hopefully uh, doing it firsthand and having success at it will help us as we move forward because we're running into a pretty tough schedule right now. You know, you know, you're going down your division. Now you can rip off this division games. You got to go to Tennessee in there. You got Southern Miss coming in. So, um, you know, we've made a big deal about our division and this is our next division game. So um, hopefully Saturday will will really give us a lot of confidence as we prepare tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday and take us into uh, middle, you know, on the road. Yeah, so important to start fast. We saw that this past Saturday on the road now. Uh, what do you talk to your team about, about going on the road here and starting fast? Yeah, well, we talked about it yesterday in our team meeting, uh, you know, about not letting your mind wander. You know, you just got to take care of Sunday. Uh, you got to go one day at a time in your preparation, and that's what's going to give you an opportunity to be successful Saturday at middle. And I think the guys did a good job of that over the two weeks getting ready for Western Kentucky. So uh, hopefully they'll take that same approach. That's That'll be our message every day as we move forward. Uh, we need to have a great Tuesday practice uh, with a lot of intensity and a lot of mental preparation to be ready on the road in a tough environment against a good football team. Against WKU, the big story going in was who was going to be their quarterback because everyone had been hurt at some point during the season. And, and you kind of felt like no matter who it was, uh, they're all capable of doing the same thing. And you know, same thing for us going forward. No matter who it is this week, they're all kind of capable of, of running the offense the way you want to run it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, you know, I think Evans prepared himself well. Uh, we want to keep Hassan involved in the game. I got mad at Hassan Saturday because we, we had a good little package for him went in a fumble. So he knew I was mad at him when he came off. But uh, he's got to make sure on his ball security because we need him involved in the game. Uh, we'll see where it is with Chris. He's at the doctor as we speak. Uh, you know, we'll see where he is coming out of today and, and exactly what's going to happen with him. And then, uh, you know, we'll go from there as we prepare our guys. And, and but, but we've got, you know, Evan, if he has to play, he'll I feel good about him. If Hassan has to play, feel good about him. So uh, I think the guys will be ready. And I think that, that the key is everybody around them play extremely well and do your job and handle your business. Do you feel like guys like, you know, Highsmith Butler went out for a little bit, They'll all be good to go on Saturday. Yeah, Alex came back and played. He might be the toughest guy on our football team. I mean, that guy was dealing with the numb. His hand was numb for a quarter, and then he came back in the second half and played. I mean, 
you know, he's a warrior and and Anthony's got a real bad bruise on his ankle. So he should be back. Uh, he didn't he didn't go yesterday, but uh, he should be back Tuesday. So, uh, you know, I think the issue for us has always been that D line. You know, we've had so many injuries on that interior piece of our defensive line. So we've got to we've got to continue to get those guys healthy. Uh, I thought uh, Timmy and, and uh, Tyler played extremely well. Uh, DT did some good things. So we got to keep him upright, keep that shoulder. Uh, keep strengthening it so we can keep him uh, going as well. Let's take that last break, come back, and wrap up the show after that. Uh, again, the Niners this week at Middle Tennessee, Saturday, 3 o'clock. Our pregame coverage beginning at 2. This is Goldmine Live on the Charlotte IMG Sports Network. It's the one and only Ford Truck Month, the place to find one of a kind deals on Ford F Series and the brand with the most JD Power Initial Quality Awards. With best in class towing and torque, these bad boys make the rules and break them. That's why it's America's best selling truck 41 years straight. But like ribs at a barbecue, these deals won't last long. Ford Truck Month, it's buy now time, partner. During Ford Truck Month, get a 2018 F 150 with 0 for 72 or 11,790 in total savings only at your Carolina Ford dealer. And welcome back to Goldmine Live final segment this week. And uh, again, week seven coming up for the Niners, Middle Tennessee, 3 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, Coach, the special teams player of the game this past weekend against WKU, Will Graham, former walk on, uh, playing awfully well. Yeah, he did. He had a really big game for us uh, on kickoff. He made two tackles, two big physical tackles. I was really proud of him. Did a nice job on kickoff return. Uh, so he's a guy that's really proven himself and coming out and working and, and starting to impact the game. You guys had a chance on Friday as a team to uh, go and support the volleyball team and the soccer teams are playing well. Yeah. Volleyball is playing really well. Yeah, this is a fun time of year. You know, we're making our stretch run down here through football, but just a lot going on. You know, took the team to the volleyball game. They beat uh, Middle Tennessee in three sets. Uh, played extremely well. I don't, I don't know how they did yesterday. I didn't. I didn't check their score, but just so much going on on campus. I think basketball starts this week. Uh, you know, so this is a fun time of year because everything starts really firing up on campus and everybody's playing. And so uh, it's a fun time of year. You got the basketball madness on Thursday. Both teams getting uh, introduced to the crowds for the first time. And of course, uh, Coach Sanchez, it'll be the first time folks get to see his group coming out. I know your guys will be out there supporting that. Uh, it is a fun time. There's so many sports overlapping right now. Yeah, there is. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, it was good to see you know the football team and, and the volleyball team interact after the game I mean our guys were really into the game and and it was good it was they played well and it was a lot of fun to be there that's for sure and basketball will be the same way you know those uh, get out there and support those other teams that, that play and everybody get out and, and watch our soccer teams play and and a lot, a lot of good things going on on campus right now we mentioned last week with the homecoming I, I know you're really busy on game day but you get a chance to visit with any of the guys that came back yeah I got to see you Riley May and Khalif uh, Khalif was in the locker room hadn't seen him in a while uh, Jamal Covington was on the on the field so got to see a lot of those guys uh, it was good Give us again a little breakdown about Middle Tennessee, some keys to a victory for the Niners on Saturday. Well, I think the, the key is can we limit, uh, we got to really limit big plays uh, from their offense, uh, whether that's them running the ball or Brent throwing it. I think that's going to be a real key in the game. And then I think the second key in the game is handling, handling their blitz package and being able to push the ball down the field and make plays. Can we, can we sustain drives without loss yardage plays? I think it's going to be a real key in this game as uh, we move through it. Can you take anything from the game last year because you know, Stocksville didn't play, but you mentioned how they kind of ran the ball right at us. Yeah, he actually played last year. It was the year before you're right, you're he right. didn't play. So he made a real – we can take a lot from last year's game because the kids get to see firsthand – you know, they got to experience it, how accurate he is as a passer, and you don't have a lot of margin for error. Uh, you can cover a guy, and he can still be open with this guy. So uh, you've got to – you really got to be on point from a secondary standpoint and and not let him get to running the ball. I thought they ran the ball on us last year, which, which hurt us some. Also, you mentioned special teams last week being a key and uh, going forward this week as well against Middle Cruz doing a great job keeping the ball uh, away from those return guys. Yeah, he is. We, you know, nice things we only had to punt once last week. I thought we did some good things. We really had a shot on the punt return to break the one. We just missed one block, and I thought Mark had a chance to get it down the boundary. So, um, anyway, we got to play well in the special teams, and Cruz got to keep kicking it, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Well, Coach, uh, as always, we enjoyed the Monday visits. Have a great uh, rest of today and the rest of the week. We'll get uh, ready to see you again for the game on Saturday against Middle Tennessee. Good luck. All right, man. Thanks. We appreciate it, guys. Good luck. That's going to wrap up another show this week. Thanks again for listening and tuning in. And uh, don't forget, Basketball Mad is coming up on Thursday night on campus at Halton Arena. So for Al Wallace and Coach Brad Lambert, I'm Matt Swarad. Matt, present back in the studio. Again, thanks for listening to Go Mind Live. So long, everybody.